uh, if we are able to do what we're doing, this is going to be a story of the century, right? Uh, building a flying taxi uh, out of India. We're known for a lot of software and consumer tech startups, but we're yet to prove our metal in hardware, which we are slowly doing with all the EV vehicle startups coming up. But a flying taxi out of India almost sounds like an impossible news. Hey folks, welcome to First Check Portfolio Shorts. My name is Noah Martins and this is a series where we speak to founders of our portfolio companies so that you get to know their team, understand what they're building and the problem they're trying to solve. If you like the content that we've been putting out, do like, share and subscribe so that we can reach more founders and startup enthusiasts like you. Today's very special guests are Professor Satya Chakravarti and Pranjal Mehta from the ePlane company. The ePlane company is building high mileage flying taxis for faster intracity commuting. Their new aerial vehicle will help people travel within cities at the speed of a helicopter but at the price of a road taxi. They plan to change how short haul point to point transportation is done for both use cases, transporting goods and humans. I had an awesome conversation with Pranjal and Professor Satya. The sheer audacity of their goal is so inspiring and I had a great time talking to them. Stick around till the end of the episode to learn more about the ePlane company. Thank you both for joining me. Uh, it's a pleasure to host you today. Great. Hey, thanks for having us. Okay, so let's start by to- talking about the problem that you're trying to solve at the ePlane company. Traffic. Um, I grew up in Bangalore. Okay. And uh, even if one did not, I'm sure most of us have been to Bangalore. And the problem does not reside only in Bangalore. The problem of traffic exists everywhere. Uh, but right. this is what we're trying to solve. Cities are growing, people are migrating to cities looking for economic opportunities and ground infrastructure takes time and capital to build something that is uh, not fast enough and not keeping up at the same pace as people are migrating to these cities. And there are several solutions that one can talk of. We can build roads, we can build metros, but all of these require a huge amount of capital uh, investment. And what we're trying to look at is how do we, uh, you know, sort of leapfrog what is conventionally uh, the solution that people have proposed to solving traffic, which is building ground infrastructure. Yeah, so I don't know right. about the fog part, but definitely leap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talk to me about your solution. What is the plane company? What do you all do? So we are, so, which is exactly what I said, which is like we leap. That is, we, <laughs> we, we, we make a plane that will actually take off like a drone and move like a plane. Uh, so what we want to do is to actually provide a solution that's as close to what a taxi is. Uh, today, uh, except that it is going to be in the air. And why would we want it to be in the air is because it can actually cut down travel time significantly to about one tenth of what they are today. Uh, but what are the features of a taxi which are not there for a plane is that you can actually dial a taxi and it can come, come to your doorstep and take you to where you want and drop you there. Uh, and these typical these distances are typically of the order of about, let's say, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers, that kind of distances. Anything shorter, you could still use the road taxi. You don't need a plane for it. But where you really get stuck for long hours is in the in this kind of a distance. Uh, if you use a conventional, well, we don't really have conventional planes doing this at all in the first place right now. But uh, if you try to do something like a conventional plane, you will end up having to travel at least a minimum distance of about 50 kilometers because the speeds at which it will go is fairly high. So the challenge here is to make a very compact plane that is also slow flying, but also having a long range so that we do a multiple short hops in a single charge, like how a taxi would be doing multiple road trips in a single fuel tank filling of petrol or in the future, a single charge of battery if it's an electric vehicle. So the reason why we're doing electric planes is first of all, to keep the cost down. And this combination of compactness, slow flying, long range, all of that stuff is also keep the operating costs and the price down so that if we will actually offer something as close to what a taxi does, uh, picking you up at your doorstep or at your rooftop and dropping you where you want to go without you having to go to a separate body port or a helipad that is far away from where you are. You do a road travel, fly, and then again, road, road travel to your actual destination. So all of that stuff should be cut out. We now, now actually have to have a, exactly an air taxi that is very close to what a taxi, the road taxi does. If, if I can summarize that with an elevator pitch, since uh, this is a more of a VC interaction almost, 
uh, I would say we are a, a point to point uh, mobility solution, 10 times faster than current alternatives at only about one and a half to two times the cost. So that's roughly what we're building. That, that's, uh, that sounds insane. Uh, talk to me about what the progress is so far. This sounds so futuristic that it's hard to even imagine. So how close are we to this product actually being built? Six months from now is when wow. we expect to fly the first prototype. Okay. Uh, and this will seat four people? It's actually going to seat two people. Okay. And the reason why we actually went for two people is because we wanted to make the most compact plane. Right. Uh, about two thirds of Uber and Ola rides are actually single passenger rides. So okay. even if regulations do not permit an autonomous uh, passenger uh, air travel uh, and we require a single pilot, uh, we require a pilot, we will still have like a single paid passenger and that will cover about two thirds of the current road taxi uh, in the market. Uh, and we will bother about the remaining one, one third by building a larger uh, plane later on. Once we okay. pick up, so it's important for us to actually offer access to uh, the plane uh, for as many people as possible before we say we need to go somewhere else outside of your doorstep and so on. So once people actually get hooked onto this, they will literally walk the extra mile to to have like a family get get together and so on. So that that's that's the next problem. But right, the current problem is to actually do as compact a plane as possible. So six months down the line from now is when we will actually have our first prototype takeoff, but commercialization will still be a couple of years down the line because we have to go through a certification process before we right. can come. Progress is concerned. It's about six months from now. So we also have to do this very frugally, which means that we have configured a couple of subscale uh, prototypes, which we are currently working on. Uh, and uh, that should actually come out in the next month or so. We've already flown uh, our lap scale version, which is about 1.6 meters in dimension. We've done okay. a couple of iterations perfecting that. Uh, currently, we're building a three meter big product, which is sorry, three meter big prototype, which is due to fly in a couple of months as per of each. Oh, that's awesome. So, tell me about how you both met and decided to start working on this together. That's his question. <laughs> yeah. Decide, it just happened. But, uh, okay. So, uh, I started my engineering in 15, was doing a bunch of entrepreneurship in my first year, waste management. Uh, uh, as uh, as a uh, door to door service in areas where the government was you know underserving, and uh, that didn't pan out for a lot of reasons. And I was looking to do the next thing at some point. And one of my seniors introduced me to Professor Satya. So I'm from the metallurgy department, and he was teaching aerospace. So I never got a chance to meet him uh, until that point. But uh, one day I was walking down the campus, and seniors bumped into a senior. Even if you were in the same department, we might not have met. <laughs> <laughs> possible uh I, I was not that disinterested in studies <laughs> no, I, 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 meant I don't end up i don't i don't end up teaching all classes <laughs> right so i remember uh i was walking down camp uh, the campus roads and i bumped into the senior and she said hey uh i've been working with this professor who wants to build electric planes and uh, i said very interesting and i started smiling and she's like why are you smiling i said um out of boredom, I worked out the business case for a helicopter taxi once. And that was wow. the end of that conversation, right? And uh, just a little while before this, I had won a, a national level management competition where uh, it was open mostly to management schools, uh, the IAMs and FMS and all of that. And they were open to a couple of engineering colleges. And the attitude I have is you just apply, something will happen, something will not happen. So we applied and we ended up winning that competition. So, and it became national news, right? Because we were 19 at the time, we were competing against people who were 25, 27 uh, seasoned executives who were do, doing their MBA. And so it became news. And because of this, my senior, after I mentioned this helicopter taxi, went and told Prof that, hey, uh, uh, this is this kid, he's done these things. And Prof said, hey, why, why, why don't you call him? You know, I would like to talk to him. So I find myself sitting in Professor Satya's balcony and it is very overwhelming because one, even though I've heard of him, I've never met him before. Two, I have never been to any prof's balcony, forget a prof I've never met before. So it was slightly overwhelming, and uh, but it was nice. He spoke about everything he had done, and he has done a lot. Uh, he's built this entire center we're sitting in, which at that time had raised about $30 million, and today has done almost $60 million. So uh, 
I immediately said, hey, where do I sign up, right? So I still had an internship to do. I said, I went, did that internship and came back and that's how it started. We originally did not know where this would go. We wanted to do electric planes, but what would those electric planes do? Will we fly between cities or within cities? But after the early research, we realized that these are not going to go too far, but that's not too bad because they also cost much lesser to make, own and operate compared to combustion vehicles, which means we can find a different business case for it today, which happens to be urban aerial mobility, right? So that is the beginning of how we started working together. That's that's uh, as good as the origin story gets. Um, okay, so what do you think is the most difficult problem you have solved together so far? And also, a uh, follow-up question to that, what is the wildest reaction you've got from somebody when you've told them that you're building electric planes for intra-city travel? Oh, I think most of the reactions are always wild. Yeah, I think <laughs> so, uh, being uh, entrepreneurs, the best reaction or at least, you know, the reactions we remember the most is take my money. So right. <laughs> uh, that, that has happened a few times. Uh, yeah, but... Oh, do you want to answer the other question? The most difficult problem that you have solved so far. Does it have to be something we have solved or encountered? Because we're still it in the could problem. be encountered as well. So go ahead. Sure. So one of the key problems uh, we're solving right now is we have not particularly certified aircrafts in India. When we say we, I don't mean us. I mean the ecosystem in general. We've been doing a lot of aerospace work. We have uh, manufacturing plants, churning out planes, even exporting them, uh, making components. A lot of global R&D for almost any aircraft, which even you probably would have flown in, happens here in India. We have thousands of aerospace engineers, but we have not put together an entire plane from scratch before uh, in the private space and certified it, right? Which poses a few right. challenges for us where uh, edu- uh, we have to educate the regulators on uh, how to do this. And also more because this is not a conventional aircraft. So uh, even in the other geographies, which we leaned upon earlier to certify aircrafts, et cetera, we cannot because even they're figuring it out. So that Mm. poses an interesting problem that, hey, sure, we're building an aircraft, but how do we certify it? And uh, about a year back, we probably didn't have good answers to this. But today we've actually spent a lot of time with the regulators, understanding the challenges, understanding their concerns and uh, trying to address them right now. So things are looking good. And uh, in about a year's time, we should have a good roadmap on how India will be certifying aircrafts for urban aerial mobility and also how soon can we have them actually flying over cities. Uh, Yeah, That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to let you both go with one last question. Um, You're a growing company at this point. So why should people, I mean, the answer is quite obvious, but why should, uh, other than the obvious, why should people want to come and join you on this journey and help build the plane company? We raised our first round in the middle of the pandemic about August, September of 2020. And that's when we started recruiting seriously. And we expected that a lot of people were laid off in the aerospace industry because of aviation taking a hit and we would be able to pick them up. Uh, most of our hires in that period were not people without jobs, though people who left their jobs in an industry which was letting people go, uh, but they had not lost their jobs. And yet they chose to leave those stable jobs in the middle of a pandemic and join us. So what we're doing is extremely interesting if we can build what we're building. And I'm sure with all the awesome team that we have and many more people who will join us, we will be able to. Uh, if you're able to do what we're doing, this is going to be a story of a century, right? Uh, building a flying taxi uh, out of India. We're known for a lot of software and consumer tech startups, but we're yet to prove our metal in hardware, which we are slowly doing with all the EV vehicle startups coming up. But a flying taxi out of India almost sounds like an impossible news. Uh, yeah, so we want to make that happen and we'd love people to come join us and make that uh, you know future a reality. So that's probably why people should work with us. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Pranjal and Professor Satya for taking the time. I love the energy and I love the fact that y'all are actually inspiring a whole generation of people to work on something as wild as electric planes for intercity travel. So uh, wishing you both the, and your team the best of luck and I hope this goes well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, Noah. Take care. Thank you.